Welcome to In The Workshop. This is finishing the generator unit by making the control box. So what is the control box and why do we need a control box? Well at the moment there are two wires coming out of the generator. And I need something better than this. I need a proper little control box with a voltmeter, a power outlet on a standard plug so I can plug things into it. And I'm also going to go one better than that. I'm fitting a dual USB output to the generator. And before all the purists and experts frown upon this and jump off high public buildings with a bit of luck, why would I want to fit a USB output to a steam engine generator? Well, it's quite simple really, and somewhat novel. I wish to charge my mobile phone in the workshop by steam power. Because I spend a lot of time in the workshop, and often I'm in there with a flat battery on my mobile phone. And when the battery is flat, I cannot make any calls on my mobile phone. And also if my phone battery is flat, I can't receive the kind of calls that I get. Which are usually from people trying to sell me something that I don't want in the slightest. When I get these kind of calls, I usually say, hang on, I'll get me dad. And I put the phone on the desk. I bought this on the internet via the auction site that we all know and love called eBay. So I don't know what this is going to be like. It came from China, I do believe. And here it is, a collection of bits and pieces. It was £7.13 with free postage. It has a 12 volt supply. Here it is. And this will take a cigarette lighter type adapter. And as I've just said, to charge my mobile phone, it also has one of these. A dual USB supply. This is pretty good, a 5 volt supply. Ideal to charge my mobile phone, my iPad, my iPod or even a battery pack, one of these portable battery packs. But the best bit is this digital voltmeter, and then this piece of plastic. So these all slot into the piece of plastic, and you can put them where you want. So I think I'll put the voltmeter in the middle, and then the others at either side. Very good value, I think, for £7.13. The entire unit is water resistant, and it even comes with the type of connectors that you crimp onto the wire, but I'm going to solder them together. And the good thing is, it will sit here perfectly. When I spin up the generator with my electric drill, I'm getting around 10 volts, which is okay, I suppose. I don't think the drill is going quite fast enough. And I'm really going to have to think about the speed that I can drive this generator out from a steam engine. Obviously, driving it with a leather belt from the flywheel, which is maybe 7.5 inches in diameter, it's going to go fairly fast. But I do think I'm going to have to reduce the diameter of the pulley on the generator itself. I may even have to fit an intermediate gearbox between the generator and the steam engine, just so I can turn the generator fast enough to generate 12 volts. I really don't want to have to run the model steam engine at a high speed to generate the electricity. If the speed of the steam engine causes the motion to be a blur when it's running, that's no fun at all. Plus the steam engine will wear out very quickly. You may be wondering which steam engine I'm going to use to drive this generator to generate the electricity to charge my mobile phone. The reason that I'm reusing the generator's mounting plate that came with the generator, and it's a very substantial lump of steel, is so that I can sit the generator next to any steam engine that I own and see how good it is at generating electricity. For the moment though, I'm using mains electricity on my small bandsaw to cut some pieces of plywood to make a box to house all the electronics. I'm making this box in a very unengineering sort of a way. Initially I mark the dimensions by using the item that I want to go in the box, then I check the measurements, correct them where necessary, and then use a set square to make sure that everything is square. So once I have the line in the right place, it's back over to the bandsaw to carefully cut along the line. For this job, I initially used the guide but the blade is a bit blunt, so it was wandering about. So it's much easier to do it manually and just follow the line. It's a bit strange as this. When the blade is really sharp, it cuts very square. When it gets blunt, it wanders about. So I have to put a little bit of bias on to keep the blade straight. Having a blunt blade on the bandsaw makes the job not 100% accurate, but it's soon trued up by the belt sander. It's a good idea to cut slightly oversized. Then you can remove a little bit of wood on the belt sander, you end up with a perfectly square part, and it's the right size. Health and safety notice, when using a bandsaw in this manner,
be very careful that you do not cut your thumb off because you need your thumb to hold the parts in place for the next operation which is to use some cyanoacrylate adhesive, CA glue or super glue. Recently I've had a few people saying they can't understand what I'm saying and I'm really sorry about that. I do try to speak clearly but sometimes my northern accent gets the better of me. So I will put some writing on the screen and hopefully that will avoid further confusion. By the way, you don't have to use cyanoacrylate adhesive, also known as CA glue or super glue. You could use PVA glue. But I generally use this stuff because it sets very quickly. By now you should be getting the general idea of what I'm doing. I'm making a simple box, and I'm keeping everything square by using the metal block, just to make sure that it is square so that this part fits in perfectly, and indeed it does. Once the cyanoacrylate adhesive had fully cured, I used my 4 inch belt sander to sand the outside of the box until it was the same shape as the front panel, like this. Now I need to fit a backside. I'll rephrase that. Now I need to fit the rear panel, and this needs to be quite thin. I don't want it to be as thick as the rest of the box, so I'm using a piece of mahogany for this, and once again I just draw around the box. It seems to be a very simple way of doing it. If I measure it, it's bound to be wrong. You may have noticed that I've fitted some pieces of shaped hardwood on the inside corners of the box and I'm now marking this with a felt tip pen followed by drilling some pilot holes with my small mini craft drill and then I'm going to thread these holes to take some 4BA countersunk bolts. Once I'd made a pilot mark with the drill I removed the front panel and drilled the holes deeper down into the pieces of hardwood. Then what I'm going to do is thread these 4BA to take the bolts, and here I'm doing just that. And once I'd threaded the holes in the hardwood this way, I used some 4BA countersunk bolts. And to make sure everything was in the right place, I test fitted the bolts to make sure that they held the front panel securely in place. And as you can see in this clip, yes they did. All that's left to do now is paint the box. I'm using some red primer first, and here I'm rubbing down the red primer once it had dried, followed immediately, well, after a couple of hours, by some satin black spray paint. As usual, I'm spraying in the outer part of the workshop right by a wide open door, and here I'm spraying the front of the box, because I need the front edges to also be black, and I put the box upside down on a piece of metal, and I can spray the rest of it. A quick note about spray painting, or painting in general. It's not a health and safety notice, it's obvious that you don't spray inside, you do it either outside, or right by an open door, which is what I do. But if the weather is very cold or damp, you can get something called blooming on the paint, and it's where the top surface of the paint becomes cloudy and it looks very bad. So what I did after I painted this part is I carried the entire assembly, board and all, through into the warm workshop. Once the paint had dried completely, I loosely fitted the front panel to the box, checked that the box fitted where I wanted to fit, and indeed it does. It needs a second coat of paint, but that's another story. The generator set is more or less finished now. The next time you see it, it will be connected to a steam engine. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.